Hi, I'm Mark Clebourne. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're talking setting up for fine art photography. And following a recent workshop, uh, we'll give you some idea of actually what I kind of look at and how we set up the different sets in studio, um, specifically for the fine art photography. Remember, fine art photography is basically your ideas, your concept. But when people are coming on workshops with me, initially, if it's a one day kind of shoot I've got to really set everything up ready for the whole group to actually get their kind of variety but also they've got the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one. so in here we're using a simple one light set a setup with a couple of little tools all right the first thing would be is I've got a cloth background one big cloth background um, basically it's high as well as actually long and we've got self-made posing box um, they can stand on it, sit on it, you name it. We've got different varieties uh, kind of actually to fit. But um, I find that it's better to cover them uh, when we're working in the fine art element. Traditionally, when I'm buying a background, as soon as I, I've kind of bought one in and I love it, and I go, right, this is my background for a long time, I'll usually go and buy a secondary background to it as well to act as either a floor covering or to act as a cover to the props within the scene. Obviously, being a pro photographer, you need different kind of variety, different kind of backgrounds, different kind of set styles to actually do with what is you. Um, but when you're in the commercial photography, more like in family portraiture and so on, you tend to actually go for a little bit more of a standardized kind of look and feel to most of your photography. I always look at kind of three sets during any form of normal photography. Whereas in fine art photography, by design, if I'm shooting for a day just with a model for myself, I'll just be looking at the one set and looking at how we can develop it. So as I said, just a one big background cloth, sim simple proper to the, the, the here. Then we've got a few um, kind of polystyrene um, flats that we use to either subtract the light or bounce the light. So we've got one on each side. These will come closer and closer in to take away, subtract, in other words, more and more of the light, uh, light in. Or if I turn them around, they've got white on the other side, they'll create themselves as small little reflectors. The interesting part about this set, though, is where the light is and how big it is, and basically uh, its kind of light source. It's gonna be loved by some. It's Marmite, in other words, yeah? You're either gonna love it, you're gonna hate, hate, hate it. Uh, and this is a, a set here where I'm making the delegates kind of work a little bit more because they've got to start to think about the light position and so on and how it's going to affect it. So as far as this big silver umbrella, quite high up, in fact, we've lowered it down just for the film, um, but it's usually up about another foot again uh, to actually create the big flood of light. But of course, when the subject is looking straight at camera position, uh, if the light is up very high, you're going to find there's almost no catch light within the eye. So they're either going to have to raise the head um, or basically not look at camera position at all. Those are the key two po uh, positions of the face. If they're going to look at camera position, make sure there's a catch light in the eye of some kind, otherwise the eye is going to look soulless, or don't get them to look towards camera. So look away, look to the floor, look higher and away, or look towards the light, uh, the light source itself. Remem uh, remembering the camera position doesn't have to be fixated here. It can move all around this set to actually get a different kind of viewpoint, as well as stepping in closer and further away to give yourself more and more dynamic. So, me metering wise, if the, sub if the subject is sat on here, they're going to be at this position. So I would meter from the face towards the light source. Remember, this is always my light source, no matter what. And this will always be the working exposure. So from here, to where they're stood up there. I'm six foot tall, um, so probably most people's eyes are gonna be around about this kind of level, yeah, or around about here. So I'd meter from here for the extra expo exposure. So if I wanted to work fast and I didn't wanna re-meter throughout the day, I'd recommend you not doing that, however, but if I was, I want one for around about this level and I want an exposure for around this, uh, this level. So if I wanted to work on 5.6, you'll probably find that as they come down in height, you're gonna lose close to a stop. About a, a three foot depth uh, or length is gonna give, give you a stop difference in the exposure. So if somebody is up here and high and it's giving you five, six, when they get down to a normal height, it's gonna be around about F4. So then I can just play up with my ISO, 200 ISO, and then I'm straight into 5.6 without having to re meter for the light itself. However, I would re recommend that you're meter in every single time you change the setup within the seat. You might see around as well, we've got our kind of clothes rack for styling behind. 
Uh, it doesn't mean as a photographer you've got to do, uh, do these things, but when you're working on a conceptual project yourself, you're going to need to make sure you've got the right clothing for the model, um, otherwise it's not all going to gel itself together, whether it's in colour palette or style and design. Hope you've enjoyed this setting up for fine art photography with the Academy. We'll see you in the next one.